Hello, I'm Marsha Ogden. Welcome to my podcast, Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. It's for anyone who's passed that milestone, like me by a long chalk, and who, like me, has realised that we could be on this earth for another 30 or 40 years. So let's make the best of it. Welcome to episode four of Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. Today's theme is one day or day one. I planned the episode a few weeks ago, so I knew what the theme was going to be. But I'm just wondering whether it's worked on myself subconsciously, because, oh my goodness, you'll never guess what I've committed to this week. I've only put myself forward for and been accepted to speak at a conference in Las Vegas. Ah, it's a ladies conference and there are three opportunities to speak, which I've accepted, as well as the invitation to submit an article and a chapter of a book that will accompany the conference. So what you might think, big deal, good for you. But it's next month. It was one of those situations where I thought, just do it. Because I keep saying, one day I'll have a presentation ready to go about this. I'll have a presentation ready to go about that. But I needed a bit of a rocket under me. And this has lit the touch paper. I've got four weeks to get it all together. So wish me luck. And did I forget to say... That's only one thing that I have committed to in the last month. Oh my goodness, the next few months are going to be a bit hair-raising, so hang on. I'm not the only one having an entertaining year. My friend Debbie Frost is going to join us in a moment. Well, it's a recording, but I think you know that. She is part way through an amazing year. And she'll tell you all about it just after my first life hack of the week. Here's a healthy eating life hack. Get a cauliflower and grate it down into a bowl. Beat two eggs together and then stir this into the cauliflower mixture. Add salt, pepper, whatever herbs or or even spices that you want to add. Then, on a greased baking tin, press the mixture into either two rounds for pizza bases or into four rounds as pancakes. Then, stick them in the oven for about half an hour on like a mid-ish setting I don't know I've no idea about oven settings I just guess when it's getting quite golden and baked flip it over and give the other side five minutes exposure in the oven then if you're using it as a pizza base spread tomato puree on and put on top whatever you would put on a pizza and pop it back in the oven if you're making a pancake Just spread your mixture onto half of the circle, fold it over, arrange them in a dish and put maybe a a creamy sauce on or a tomatoey sauce over the top and again pop them back in the oven. These are amazing. Even my extremely fussy husband loves these and Although, yeah, you can tell they're not a doughy base or a usual pancake made with flour. They taste really, really nice and they taste nothing like cauliflower. Don't ask me why, but they don't. Enjoy. As I mentioned, today's guest is Debbie Frost. I'm going to tell you a bit about Debbie in a moment, but the reason that I particularly wanted to interview her for today's podcast is because our theme is one day or day one. And on her 50th birthday, 
Debbie did something or she decided to do something just that little bit different and I wanted to share it with you. Debbie describes herself as a passionate and committed woman and mum of two who has a head job as a marketing manager and a voluntary heart job as a trustee with the Elm Foundation, a charity based in Derbyshire which works with women, men and children to bring an end to domestic abuse. Now eight years ago, Debbie was utterly broken following the end of her 20 year marriage. But determined to heal, Debbie has put time, energy and effort into finding the right way up again. She's recently written about her healing journey in a chapter called My Soul No Longer Screams in the Dark and the details of the book are published in the show notes. She wrote about her journey to inspire anyone who needs to believe a healthier and happier life is possible. Her motto is, we learn, then we live. And here she is. Hi, Deb. It's lovely to have you with us Hi. in my Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast. And if I can just Thank explain, you. lovely to have you here. If I can just explain how we met, Debs has a list of 50 things to do at 50. And we actually met whilst Debs was doing one of her 50 things. But I didn't know that then. And I wanted her to come on the podcast to talk about this exciting list when I found out about it. So here she is. I've seen the list. It's very diverse. I mean, what what did you feel about turning 50 that made you think, yikes, I've got to get my list together and get at this? <laughs> Everyone talks about having a bucket list. And, but that's often really big ticket stuff mm. and stuff that's in the future or things you have to save up for or find a way to do. I wanted my turning 50 to be about things you can do. Some big things, but also some little things that cost mm. nothing, take next to no time and you have a bit of fun and really celebrate life. That's essentially what it was about. Right. So not just about achieving materialistic goals it was about things that would make you satisfied with yourself and happy to be 50. <laughs> Absolutely that Marsha I think you know it would be nice to have you know I'm going to have I don't know a new watch a new car a new whatever but it's, there's none of that on my list mm -hmm. um, much more about where's the fun where's the connection where's the just enjoying life, being grateful, more like an emotional or spiritual kind of right. events, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. What made 50 the milestone, just the fact that it was a big birthday or, or was 50 sort of like a really big milestone for you? I think it was more, um, when I first thought of this, I was obviously coming towards the end of my 40s and I was actually just thinking... I'm not sure how I feel about being 50. So let's just fudge it. Let's make some fun mm. out of it. Let's make yeah. it a conversation. Um, and also my 40s had been quite difficult. So I very much saw it as a line in the sand. Mm. Let's get out there, make those connections, have some fun, as yeah. I say. Yeah. And also fulfill some dreams. Um, and think back to childhood. What made me happy mm. back then? Yeah. So very much as sort of looking back, looking forward. Um, I like that sort of attitude. Yeah, yeah. I think it is a kind of milestone in, in, in that way because when you're 30 and you're 40, you still consider yourself young. And like now, we feel young. Uh, like for me, it's only when I look in the mirror that I get reminded how old I am. <laughs> but in my head, I'm still a teenager or early 20s. And I think 50 is, is sort of a reflection time. And like you said, when you're a teenager, you are happy and you've got ambitions and where did they go and are they still there yeah. and I think they are when you strip everything back when you take away the fact that you're a mum and you're a wife and all of that stuff then yeah. and the responsible adult bit you find all those things from when you were a teenager don't you I'm looking at what's on your list mm -hmm. and 
have to say, you are so organised. Debs has sent me a list of all the things that, that she's going to do this year. And they're categorised under, let me find my paperwork. I've got done, in progress and planned. I'm yes. very impressed. <laughs> And there's an awful lot on the done list. How long ago was it that you turned 50? Uh, it was in February. So uh, February the oh 5th was, was the big day. And so these things have been happening since then yeah. because um, I had a chat with a really good friend of mine. She turned 50 the month later. Mm. And she said, oh, I want a 50 and 50 list too. So we were connecting on WhatsApp. I'm going to put this. Oh, let's do this together. So what's really nice is I've got some other people in on this as well. Right, so it's yeah. Connections with people um, on there. We've got in the planned list, and sorry if we're jumping ahead, uh, but a hot air balloon ride. That should have actually been right now, Marcia. But yeah. Bit of the weather and the invite to speak with you. Here I am. <laughs> but it was um, my friend Caroline who said, let's do this together. Yeah. So it's actually enjoying friendship at the same time as fulfilling something I would like to do. That's actually on the list as a tribute to my mum as well. That is something she would like would have liked to have done and never got would the chance. She? Oh, yes. Yeah, that, that would be a lovely memory. Yeah, yeah. I've done it, one and they are... Uh, it's it's a surreal experience. Well, okay. There. It's fantastic. You'll really love it. Yeah, so wish yeah. wish us both some sunshine for that day. So yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Rolling hills of Derbyshire. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fantastic. And um, you've got you've got some weird things on here if you don't mind oh. me saying. <laughs> like, yeah. <Everyone's> different. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually on your done list. Have a, photo, okay. have a photo taken with the Women of Steel statue in Sheffield. Yeah. And you've done that, have you? Was it? I did, I did I'm not that. Not Sheffield. What's the, what, and I know it's a steel city. What's the yes. Women of Steel statue? So it's, it's the contribution that women made to the war effort. Oh, and, right. Okay. Yeah. And so um, this, the statue is outside the city hall at the moment. And mm. on the list, you've also got the ab sale that I did. A family reunion that I had on a roof, go on the Millennium right. Wheel and yeah. raise £500 for charity and have your photo taken with the Women of Steel. I did those all in one oh, day. Oh, fantastic. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yes. what I love about this list. You've got things on like, like see the Northern Lights um, and visit Iceland, which I believe you've done, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I did that on the 6th of February, so the day after my birthday. <laughs> so you started off with number one, day after. <laughs> you'll, have it, you'll have it all boxed up in a couple of months. Yeah, so you've yeah, got the big things on. But what I like about this is, like you said, <laughs> it's not a bucket list, is it? It's, it's, like you said, it's got little not things on it, like the Women of Steel thing. You know, I think that that's the good idea. It makes it real because... When you hear people's bucket lists, you think, mm, yeah, you must have lots of money tucked away if you're going to do all that. These are like give up chocolate for a year, um, do a podcast. Yes. You've got all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it's very inspirational because a lot of a lot of people just, I think we're realising, and 50 is that time when you do realise, instead of drifting from day to day, yeah, we don't know how long we've got so if there's something you need to do and you've still not done it you need to get around to it pretty fast because you don't you just don't know do you but what can you do today what could you do tomorrow what could mm. you do in the next six months it's that kind of attitude yeah. and it's also saying yes so if somebody makes a suggestion or you see something on facebook which is where the ab sale started mm. we'll part to long lost cousin john right and his partner and also a friend of mine Marie and they were straight in we're going to do this with you yeah. and so I was with my partner and my brother and I said do you fancy doing an abseil and they went no and I, I said well I am and they yeah. couldn't believe it it was just literally that moment this is something that scares me yeah it's beyond something I would normally have done or my experience but here was a challenge that I could do to make a difference to someone else yeah and yeah. take some things off a list you know feel the fear and do it anyway exactly I just get up and do it don't think about it and analyse it and think, what if, what if, what if, what will they think? What my, fa my family will think I'm crazy. Yeah. Forget that. It's all about you. Just 
five four three two one yes. do it <laughs> say yes yeah for the record i won't be doing another ab sale i'll find something else to do were you scared i loved it and i really what was interesting was i thought it would be the going over the parapet i thought mm. it would be sitting on the parapet i thought it'd be hanging off the building none of that it was halfway down when yeah. the enormity and the reality of what i was actually doing hit me and i think that was quite telling so i think amongst these things and these little challenges you learn something about yourself as well mm. and you thought process and what's important but what was fantastic yeah. was I was doing it with friends and long lost family mm. and there was a gang of about 20 20 plus cheerleaders oh my Brilliant. all waiting to go to the pub yeah. with us after. yeah so oh. it was a fantastic day yeah. absolutely brilliant yeah yeah and what time scale have you given yourself to cover all these is it 50 at 50 are you going to do them all this year absolutely they're yeah. all in this year and as you can see um there's a couple i've missed off there so we're probably halfway through but i think i've left 10 at the end i haven't specified yeah. because i don't know what's going to come up i didn't know i would be doing this podcast with you mm. you know this is all serendipity seeing where the journey goes yeah and just enjoying life really yeah. um that's what it's about for me what's next what can we do but not in a a real challenge anyway just having some fun i think i've said that a few times and that really is important yeah along the way also it gives you you know people are interested in this oh i want one of those mm. i'm 40 in a couple of years i have a 40 and 40 list so it's really started a conversation going as well that is fantastic and you can then say to people well, what would you do or people want to know what your top five are or why yeah. and i think the why yeah. is really important yeah. when you by the time you get to 50 mm -hmm why who are you why does this matter to you and yeah, that was yeah. why I said, there's some going back there's some looking forward and there's some revisiting of places as well mm -hmm. of the ones that are there whether you've done or they're in progress or the planned what would have been your number one you know i that. think it was the northern lights absolutely that mm -hmm. is something that i wanted to feel i wanted to see it but I hope to feel it as well. Mm. So I think that we talked earlier about it's an emotional, a spiritual series of adventures. Mm -hmm. And for me, the anticipation of seeing the Northern Lights, and I was gifted that opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was fortunate enough to have that experience. Um, it wasn't exactly as you see on the TV. Mm. Um, so you could be disappointed, or you can say, how fortunate was I? I saw what I saw. Yeah. And it filled my soul. It made me happy. Mm -hmm. And it was a massive tick off the list. Yeah. Been on that that would have been a bucket list, if you like. Yes, mm -hmm. it's and to have gone there just being fifty and then literally a day later seeing the Northern Lights was incredible. What are you gonna do when you're fifty one? Oh, well, I'll have to have a 51 in 51 list, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, run out of things. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like um, that visit all my childhood homes in one day. Did you have, did you have a lot of moving yes. around when you were a ch child? It was all in the same sort of location. But yes, mm. we did. Yeah. Um, or more than people tended to who were just Sheffield based in those days, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to sort of start at zero which is a house I've never been to um I vaguely know where it is and then go to the next house and the next house and the next yeah house. I, so, I I my parents lived in the same house well they both died um fairly recently but we yeah, have the same that. house all the way through childhood so that intrigues me because okay. if, you go, if you go back to somewhere it must evoke particular memories of a particular era wasn't it yes i think so and that's what it's about so i lived in my the first house i lived in for nine months mm. and then i healed and opposite there who became my best friend was born she'd been born a month earlier so mm -hmm. we've literally been friends right for 50 years this year mm -hmm. so to go back to that street alien dream um to stand outside that home which i know for a fact is still painted the same mustard color right that it 
back in the very early 70s yeah um, which amazes me you know out of all the things that have changed in the world those window yep. cells are still yeah. stood, or they were yeah. a few years ago yeah. but i've not seen it from outside the front i've seen it from the back mm-hmm. looking at um, i happened to go into somebody's house and it was mm-hmm. across the way and i was like oh my goodness and this is when that kind of idea of revisiting and standing there and having the memories you know the french skipping the hide and seek all those yeah. things yeah i'm a very happy sort of from sort of one to nine mm. was hugely happy for me lots yeah. of friends and friendship features um in my activities and some of them are based around friends and meeting up with friends again because friendship is so important to me so it's yeah. a celebration of that as well really of course yeah i have a question that i am asking all okay. the ladies well, and gentlemen i suppose that i in, will interview on this podcast and that is yeah if the teenage debbie could yes. see you now what would she be proud of and what would she wish you had done differently wow Mm. okay that's a huge um i think that a lot of the healing work that i've been doing over the last eight years or so has been very much connecting with the past and my inner child and going back so that's an interesting concept for me anyway Mm. but i think i feel that integration of who you were and who you are now and i think just if you ask me the word that you'd be proud of it hopefully tenacity mm-hmm. and enthusiasm zest for life mm. making things happen but also being kind i think that kindness is so important mm-hmm. friendship those kinds of things but you asked me about one thing and i think just tenacity the will yeah. to carry on definitely yeah. yeah and just just out of a point i've actually put which is in progress on my list the daily ra- random acts of kindness I just think even a smile, oh yeah, even yeah. you know, yeah. all those things we can all make a massive difference. And I hope that teenage me did those things as well. Are we going to have an update? You think before you're 51 to see how far you've got, or yes. whether it, it was ended up as 82 things to do at 50? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of me. So let's burst yeah. at the seams and see what happens. I think so. And I think to give two examples from my list, one is to make a daisy chain because daisies are there and you can. And you can. And they're pretty things and that would be, yeah. Yeah. And also roll down a hill like we did when we were kids. I mean, not today. (laughs) You need some small grandchildren with you. And then nobody (laughs) thinks you're being silly. They just think, oh, look, she's having a nice time with the grandchildren. They don't think, what a weird woman. So we've got some, we've got, some, we've got a whole spectrum on there, little things and big things, but mm-hmm. things that just make you happy. That's what yeah. it's about. That's what it's about. Yes. And on that happy note, I'll say goodbye to you, Deb, and I hope Thank to see you. you again very soon. And good luck with I'll look forward to the rest of your 50 at 50. Thank you. Thank you. And see what, watch this space. Thank you. We bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thanks, Deb. I hope you all found that as inspirational as I have. It just shows that it's not necessarily the great, big, expensive bucket list items that make us happy. Just little things that we've perhaps swept to one side or thought, yeah, one day, or even thought, it's not going to happen now. Anything is possible. How many times have you read a Facebook post that interests you and you or others have put F or following in the comments? There's no need to do this. If you look at the right hand side of the post, you'll see a little downward grey tick. Click that and you'll see a list of options and down by the bottom of that list is receive notifications for this post. And that means Facebook will tell you when someone comments on it. Easy. The directory
History of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is created and produced by me, Marsha Ogden, and it's available on several platforms, so please keep listening. If you'd like me to keep you updated with reminders and news, click the link in today's show notes. You can also follow me on Facebook at Gurgle It. G-U-R-G-L-E, new word, I-T. That's my company name. Or have a look at www.gurgleit.com. Again, there are links below. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just drop me a line at marsha at gurgleit.com or leave a voice message on here with detail of your topic. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. P.S. Can you do a P.S. on here? Well, I've done it anyway. Don't forget to send in any hints and tips, life hacks that you want to share with us. Just record your voice message at www.anchor.fm forward slash ddl50 forward slash messages. I still can't say it. See you soon.